Hello everyone and welcome to a what sold video. This is going to be everything that sold for me on the not live platforms for January 8th to January 14th and I have an Etsy sale to start. Man am I excited to share this one with you mostly because uh, one it's a great sale and two it is a big thank you to Rob. Rob purchased this for me over on Etsy for $160. This was that big starter jersey that you saw in not one but two videos. The first video was the how to get stains out of garments <laughs> video uh, which you guys have been asking for a while because this did have a couple of small spots on the bottom of it in the white areas which I was able to get out in that video and that is the reason why the gentleman passed on it in my thriftmas video because this rolled out on a new rack and this guy sat there for like 10 minutes looking at it real hard and then eventually passed on it and I literally sat there the whole time waiting for him to walk away from it because <laughs> I saw it like I saw the edge I saw the starter logo and I was like oh, please please walk away and they did so on Etsy I have my store set up that if your order is over $35 you get free shipping but this was a jersey so it was uh, in a padded flat rate envelope, I believe is how I put it in there, or maybe I think he was in zone one. So either way, it costs like $8 to ship this to him and I really appreciate it. So Rob, thank you so much. Uh, vintage starter hockey jerseys, not just vintage starter jerseys, but like vintage hockey jerseys in general are worth quite a bit of money. The first one I sold was a, CC, a vintage CCM jersey and I sold that one I think for 140. So vintage hockey jerseys are a win and yeah, amazing sale. So Rob, thank you again. You look fabulous in it and I hope that you will enjoy it for another, you know what, 30 years or so. And now we're gonna scoot over here and do eBay sales because eBay is my main bay. But first we gotta show you Miss Moxie because she has joined us in her lovely grumpy cat uh, face. And we're gonna talk quite a bit about books because I've sold several of them. So hopefully you guys are here for that. Uh, so I sold this lot of four Paul Anderson books. I actually offered each one of these books up for sale on Whatnot for $2 each and it was over the course of a couple of Whatnots and they didn't sell so they were all different and it was all by the same author so I just locked them up and put them in a lot and put it up for sale and it sold for $17.88. Now it was free shipping so I had probably maybe $3 into these books and sold them for $17.88 so after the shipping I still made like five or six bucks perfectly happy with that. That's normally what I do because I do do genre auctions on whatnot. It's horror, fantasy, and science fiction. So whenever I get a grouping of enough authors um, that don't sell on whatnot, I just put them up on eBay and they sell. So everything sells eventually. It's just, are you willing to wait for it? And are you on the right platform? Another book, this is the Rhineman Exchange. I paid 25 for cents for this at the bins. It sold for my philosophy price of $7.87. As I mentioned, I do have all my books free shipping. Well, almost all my books are free shipping. And that is because I have a promotion on my store of buy three books, get one free. Sometimes people take advantage of it. Sometimes people don't take advantage of it. I have a couple of regular buyers that will buy a book from me. I guess read the book and then like a week or two later, buy another book from me, <laughs> read the book and then buy another one. You know, you do you. But I just thought that was funny. Uh, I knew this was valuable just because it is a first print. So first prints of books are always valuable whether they're hardcover or paperback. Well not always, most of the time valuable. So that's why I picked this up especially at a quarter. This is a vintage Sag Harbor piece. I picked this up in a state sale for a dollar which is why I was happy to see it go on to a new home at $6.50. More than happy with that. Uh, I had a like just a pile of clothes from this place and I've already paid myself back for that estate sale. So more than happy to see this move on to a new home. This is something I picked up at the bins. So I have a dollar into this shirt. It is a Bring Me the Horizons shirt, which is like a emo screamo band, I think. I'm sure Kay is yelling at her screen at me right now. I don't know. I don't think I've ever listened to this band. Under Oath I listened to because my friend Ronnie was their sound guy. Um, but that's about it there. Oh no, and then there's Thrice. I liked Thrice, but I saw this. I knew it was a band, um, an emo-ish band, and even though it had holes in it, still sold for $15. So I thought that was great. This is a shirt I offered in one of my more recent clothing whatnots, because I do do one once a week on Thursday, 
and I offered this up for $2 and nobody purchased it on Whatnot. So I, as I mentioned, everything that goes up on Whatnot on Thursdays is something that I am more than happy and willing to sell. And this sold within a week of me listing it on eBay for $17.88. So uh, that's, that's just me like proving, proving my, my word. Anything that I put up on Whatnot is something that I'm willing to sell myself. So yay. This is retail arbitrage. I bought these at a big box store and it sold this pair of Levi's. They are high-waisted mom jeans and they were like a light canvas. They weren't like a, a heavy denim uh, because they were like a hemp blend and they sold for $24.87. I paid $15 for these uh, though because it was retail arbitrage. Uh, but this was the first one to sell and the reason I was willing to let it go for $24.87 is because I knew this was a global shipping program or international shipping program. GSP. It was eBay's GSP so I knew they were paying a quite a bit to ship this so hope they like them. This is another book I offered up on Whatnot and it didn't sell uh, for $2 on Whatnot but it sold for $9.80 on eBay. I paid a quarter for this book at the bins. So I made like five bucks, five or six dollars off of this book. Again, I love buying and selling books on all the platforms. Well, not all the platforms. I love buying and selling books on eBay and whatnot because they're easy to list and uh, I love them in general. I have so many books. I have like literally thousands of books in my house. <laughs> not only just to resell, but also if for my own personal uh, enjoyment. This is an Angora blend sweater. That is why I picked it up. It's also because it's this beautiful rose pattern. Very fluffy. Uh, if you did not know, I'm super allergic. Why am I so twitchy? Uh, my heart's doing palpitations right now. So if you're wondering why I keep moving, I'm trying, like putting my knees up. It's because I have pots and right now my uh, heart is in AFib, which I should be laying down for, but instead I'm like, no, I'm going to get through this video. I need to film this. <laughs> so I'll be fine. I'm just letting you know why I'm like extra twitchy and like being like this. But this is from the 80s. It sold for my flossing price of $21.87. And I think I picked this up at in Tennessee at a Goodwill. So I paid $4.50 for this. This is something I picked up at the bins. I paid 25 cents for this. This is House. This is uh, a history in photographs of Anne Frank's house. Uh, so it not only does it have pictures in the house and around the house and significant items in the house, but it also has little blurbs about her life and stuff. Uh, the reason why this, and like her family, and the reason why this sold for $9.87 is because this book you could actually only get if you went to the Anne Frank house. Well, I mean, you can buy it on Amazon, you can buy anything on Amazon, but I'm just saying like, this is something that you would normally only get as a souvenir uh, by going to the house. And I found this at the bins. And it's a soft pack, so I paid 25 cents for it. Sold pretty much the day after I listed it for my full asking price. So pretty perfectly happy to save this piece of history from going to the trash. Uh, I do not pick up Fab Lebedics unless it's new. And this is a pair of Boost Power Hold leggings by Fab Lebedics, and they were new with tags, and they sold on offer for $24. And I thought about keeping these for myself, but because they were new with tags, I decided to go ahead and sell them. This is a vintage John Ashford sweater. I, I love buying and selling my vintage 80s and 90s sweaters. Although I think this one is actually, this one's from the 70s. Because I love my oversized men's sweaters. So I always pick them up when I see them. This was uh, a wool blend, or I think actually this was solid wool. Yeah, this was a wool sweater. And so it sold for $18, perfectly happy to let it go. This is a cool piece, another piece that it's not just cool, it is literally the brand cool. Another piece I believe I offered up on Whatnot for $2 and nobody purchased it there, so it sold on eBay when I listed it for $17. Again, you know, within a week of me listing it, so this was amazing and super glad that it moved quickly. These are two Guidepost books. So Guidepost is a religious publisher and they do not sell their books in bookstores. They only sell it online. So their books don't have barcodes on them, uh, which is why most FBA sellers pass by them, but they, they're they very distinct both in their cover and also in their spine. So I keep an eye out for them whenever I find them because of the fact that they do sell really fast. Like this is the second lot of guidepost books that I have 
found and sold and they literally sell within a week of me listing them. They have a really high sell through rate, which for books is pretty spectacular. And that's because to get these books new, it's like 60 to $20 depending on the book. And you can only get it from that website. So if you can buy them used for a fraction of the cost, why wouldn't you? Um, so sold for $8.80. I have a dollar into this. And like I said, it sold literally the next day. So made three bucks super fast. That If that's not for you, it's not for you. But I don't like books going to landfill. And if I know that I can move it on to a new home, I will. Another book that I picked up for 10 cents at that big book buyout I did at the restore. At the restore got a, a, a bookstore went out of business and they got all of the books and I bought like 500 books <laughs> in like a month. It was a lot. Uh, so this is part of that. Uh, so I paid 10 cents for this book and it sold for my full asking price of 11.87. Another item I put up for sale on whatnot at for two dollars. Nobody bought it. One of my regular buyers who I don't know if is a viewer or not. Arthur if you are a viewer. Again, thank you. I thank you almost every video because you buy from me frequently, but I, I don't know if they, because they've never sent me a message. They've never acknowledged. They just will randomly buy stuff, like maybe once a month. Uh, and they live like really close, so who knows. Uh, but Arthur, if you are a viewer, thank you. This is a turtle fur merino wool, which is why I picked it up, because it was turtle fur and it was merino wool. Now this was missing its pom-pom, so I made a new pom-pom. They're really easy to make uh, and attached a new one. Again, I do like to save things when I can from the landfill and it immediately moved on to a new home. Uh, so I have like, what, 50 cents into this and then like a dollar in materials <laughs> to, to make a new pom-pom. So this was great. Another vintage piece. I love my vintage button fronts. This is Russ, which is a vintage brand that I keep an eye out for. I do have, it does have to be like kind of cool looking for me to pick it up, but it is a vintage brand that normally moves for me. Uh, this sold for $14. I paid $2 for this at an estate sale. This is another book. I picked this up at the bins. I have 25 cents into this paperback. It sold for $7.87. Another one with free shipping. So after I paid shipping, which shipping has gone up on eBay again, which is super fun. So I made a couple bucks off of this and saved a book from the landfill. And this was a vintage book, so even better. Now you guys don't see me have a whole lot of electronics and or video games on this channel and that is because I don't find them very often and I actually didn't find this one. This is mine. So I am a partnered streamer on Twitch and I mean right now I'm playing Pal World. I started streaming on PlayStation so I had the PlayStation camera for the PlayStation 4 and now that I have a capture card I didn't need it anymore because I can just use my computer to stream the games from the PlayStation. More technical than you guys need to know here on reselling YouTube, but I realized that I wasn't using this anymore and I was never gonna need it again, so I just decided to sell it. It sold for $15 and the buyer paid for shipping. Sold like the next day after I listed it, so I've had this thing unused for like three years now. <laughs> Two or three years now, so could have had that money sooner. Oh well, actually it would have been better to have sold that during, you know, COVID. We get living, you learn. This is another great sale, so a second great sale. Uh, if you want to see these great sales before these videos, you can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> that is where I am posting them pretty regularly. Because for some odd reason, 2024 is going to be my year, it seems. I keep getting these really nice sales consistently, and I need to find some wood to knock on now. There we go. And it is this set of vintage 1960 erasable pins um, from Koh i Noor. Now, Koh i Noor is actually the name of a diamond. It is one of the largest cut diamonds and it is part of the British Crown Jewels from when, you know, they owned India. This brand is a well-known pen brand. If you can find Koh i Noor pens when you're out and they work, um, they're, they're really popular drafting tools and they're very expensive. Uh, so I actually picked these up out of an estate sale, an estate sale at a box. I will repeat this constantly. If you are at an estate sale, never been to one before, or even if you are someone who has been to a few, do not be afraid to open all the cabinets, open all the drawers and open all the boxes. Unless it specifically says, do not enter this door, do not open this cabinet or do not open this box open them. You will find 
so much stuff doing that. I have made so much money by just being willing to open up cabinets and open up boxes and open up drawers. And that is because some, most of the estate deals that I go to, like you can't price everything because they're literally overflowing with stuff. And so normally that stuff is not priced at all and they just want to get rid of it. <laughs> and so you get it for really cheap. So this set of pens I paid $2 for and it did take a year to sell, but it sold for my full asking price of $69.87, which I'm super happy about. Now it did take also a while for me to list them, but I did finally list them because I was also like trying to figure out like how, what should I list these for? I see all the modern listings for Koei Noir pins, but I have not seen any vintage listings for the pens. So, and this was like, they all worked. Well, they all worked when I listed them. I don't know if they still work now, but I shipped them off and they've kept them. So I guess it's gone, it's, it's gone well. So this is, I, I sold two pairs of these in the same week. Uh, this one sold on offer as well for $27.90. So a little bit more than the first one, but that's because this one was shipping domestically. So went in a little bit more because I, with that $15 buy cost, but again, perfectly happy with this. Uh, I don't do retail arbitrage very often. I normally only do retail arbitrage around September and October where I'm getting those like back to school deals and prepping for quarter four. That's normally the only time I do retail arbitrage because I'm trying to like make it so my store has new with tag stuff uh, going into quarter four for Christmas and stuff. But this is another item I had up on whatnot and nobody bought it at $2. So I listed on eBay, it sold within a week uh, for $12. And this had, uh, I think a little bit of yellowing around the collar, but because this was from the nineties and it was a uh, single stitch Nautica shirt, sailing Nautica shirt, easy to list. Uh, you know, don't be discouraged if you see a vintage t-shirt with holes or stains. Sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes you can still sell it. It just depends on the item. Set from that same Whatnot Auction, another vintage t-shirt. This was a Hanes 5050. It had a, a sing, it was a single stitch and it had American saddle breed horses on the front. This was another one where I was a little, I was able to take, willing to take a slightly lower offer because I knew this was also going through the global shipping program. It sold for $13. It's like, again, stuff that I'm more than willing and happy to sell on eBay, but I just am offering it on Whatnot first. Um, one, because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket and two, because I know that I'm really lucky with my cheap sourcing here in Virginia. This is one that I knew would sell eventually. It just took a while. This is a vintage saddle breed denim button front dress. Uh, I paid $7 for this at a thrift store and sold for $24.87, my whole asking price. It just took a while, <laughs> but that's okay. I know with vintage, uh, it's rare for it to sell immediately, but when it does sell immediately, I get really excited, but most of the time it does take a little bit longer. So if you're not into vintage, totally understand I am because uh, sustainability is a part of the, a big part of why I love reselling. This is a Sundance catalog piece. It sold for $20. It was a size 14, absolutely gorgeous piece. I managed to find a couple of Sundance pieces for Thriftmas and I was just super ecstatic about that. So really happy. It's not a brand that I find often, but it does sell pretty consistently. Some pieces can go for a lot of money and some pieces are just bread and butter. Uh, but Sun Sundance was originally started by Robert Redford and it was a catalog brand and it's still a catalog brand. This is a thank you to Lisa, a viewer. Lisa, thank you very much. Uh, they decided to take advantage of my buy three, get one free book offer. And they bought four of the brand new books I picked up at that big book buyout I mentioned earlier. So I have 40 cents into these books, which Lisa, again, big thank you for that. And so they paid $68.48 for these four books. So Lisa, that was amazing. It cost about five dollars to ship these books to her so this was absolutely massive i mean it's i guess cheaper than if you bought them off of amazon because these were all vintage new books um that aren't really in print i mean heinrich wall you can find pretty regularly but most of the rest of them are are harder to find books especially in new condition so they're like translation books which is also why I did that big book buyout is because a lot of them were university press books, which is something to be on the lookout for if you're buying books. And also uh, translations of um, 
European and South American authors into English. Speaking of video games, mentioned that with the camera. This is a Mario Sports Mix Nintendo Wii video game. I actually found this at the bins. I paid 50 cents for this. And the reason why I'm like smiling is because normally video games are separated out, sold in the electronics store that's attached to the Goodwill bins for quite a markup. Uh, but this got snuck by and then I it snuck by the checkout. Nor like I've found video games at the bins in Hampton Roads a couple of times, but normally when I'm checking out, the person at the cash register will pull it and say, yeah, I can't sell this to you. They didn't do it this time, so I got this for 50 cents and it literally sold within a week for $25. So thank you cash register person. But I was also like buying, I think 50 or 60 books at the same time. So they probably just thought it was a book. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Another vintage Sag Harbor piece. I buy these knit uh, mock necks all the time because as you, you see me sell two of them, they don't sell for a whole lot, but they do consistently sell for me. Sold for $11.90. Uh, this is a saddle breed. Uh, I normally do not pick up saddle breed, but not only was this vintage, but this was also Madras, which is a specific type of India dye plaid. And this sold for $16.08. So, you know, never say never. Saddle Breed, I think, is a brand sold at Dillard's or JCPenney or one of those department stores. Uh, pretty, pretty innocuous brand and something that is literally in every single thrift store. But I, you could still make money on it if you you know exact little little niches in there. And then the last item I have to share with you is a set of figs. Uh, I found an entire new rack of figs. Like the figs weren't new, but it was a new rack at Goodwill when I went there. Uh, after going to the bins, I went to the retail location next door and they just pulled out this rack of figs and they were all men's size large, tops and bottoms, and I bought all of them. So I paid $11 for this top and bottom set. Uh, it was a Leon top and a Pisco bottom. Uh, and I know that because I looked up the style number and also some of the newer styles have the style actually in the material tag. Sold for $44.87, my full asking price. So I think that was $11 was well worth it. But yeah, 2024, my sales have been really good. I am attributing that to listing consistently, uh, doing the changing to uh, listing every day and listing a set amount every day has definitely helped my business quite a bit. Uh, and I'm just really excited about that. So I, I think 2024 things are going to just continue to improve and I really appreciate those of you being here with me and I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe I've convinced some of you to try reselling books. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but thank you. I will hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, bye. Bye.